similar curses that is on her. So it's like, yo, what is going on? What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host a podcast across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are going to talk about manga. We're going to talk about the five manga that I am reading at the moment. The first one I'm going to talk about is The Cooking Wizard. This is a comedy, drama, fantasy, romance. Its type is a manhwa. It's about this tattoo artist who gets transported to another world. Yes, easy. I like these guys, but she gets transported because this little cute fairy went to get a dragon scale to help this guy and somehow the fairy gets transported to our world and the tattoo artist stumbles upon it and gets transported and along the way she dies and so her soul gets put into a dead body of that other world and it turns out this other world is a webtoon that she was reading and what's interesting about this is the main character can't eat he has been poisoned throughout his whole life so he's lost the sense of taste everything tastes bad to him the only thing he likes to eat are like fruits something that has like a juicy texture that's refreshing and such and our this main character female lead she loves food she's a foodie she likes to cook and she gets transported into a plant wizard plant magician and she utilizes that to grow plants and she cooks too so we go from there next is vengeance of a saint full of wounds this one is interesting so in a lot of stories especially isekai fantasies we have this character that can heal and such well this saint, saint uh, she heals but she takes on the wounds and then she heals that's really interesting because while you're doing something good you're harming yourself at the same time so you're being super selfless and apparently in this story setting there's been a sanctus. Afterwards, there's just a bunch of women. Yes, women. They're all women. Who have powers like the sanctus. And so they're just scattered around to help. And um, they're mostly helping the temple build their reputation. Because people associate the sanctus with the temple. And so once the temple gets worshipped more, they get more nations they get more you know reputation but then um, in this story this lead this female lead she dies and then she regresses and so she's like okay i'm not gonna be the same thing anymore i'm not gonna be the same selfless person anymore i'm gonna do me i'm not gonna trust those who betrayed me and she just learns that there's a lot more behind the betrayal that she experienced there's twisted masterminds behind there and as time goes by she unlocks and she learns the truth next we have first let's hide my younger brother this is a fancy manual romance this is another isekai this story was interesting to me because the beginning of the manga manhwa it shows sort of like the middle scene where a lot of things unfolded and it just caught my attention i'm like what happened here there's a villain who somehow was a girl and then later on was a man with one eye and apparently our female lead did something to that one eye and then after they show that teaser they unfold the story it starts with this girl who gets transported transmigrate isekai kind of thing we say transmigrate because somehow her mind gets put into the book that she was reading and she's familiar with this story that's a bl kind of like an angsty bl and so she is the older sister of the male protagonist of this story coincidentally in her previous world, she was an older sister who had a younger brother that was bullied. In this story that she got transmigrated into, the male lead is bullied 
by those who are enamored with him. And it gets a little dark with love. And there's like that thin line there. And it's pretty bad for the male lead. But, you know, it's supposed to have a happy ending, right? Well, because of what the male lead goes through as an older sister, she's overlapping her previous life's brother with this brother. She's, she's like, okay, I'm going to take care of him. And so she's doing everything she can within the story to prevent him from having a bad experience, a bad ending. And the main thing she wants is for him to end up with a girl. And what she does is, at one point in the story, she sends him to this all-girls school somehow. That's so funny. And it turned out that he had a fiancé, and she didn't think he was going to end up with her because in the story that she was reading in her previous world, he doesn't end up with her. But somehow this fiancé does have feelings for him. So she's like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't mean to block you, but I'm going off topic. So what's really interesting about this is she's kind of taking on the male lead's role. She's taking on his special abilities, his role in the school, throughout the story. So she's in going to encounter the villain. And the villain was obsessed with the male lead, which is why the villain was torturing him and whatnot. So she is now the target of the villain. And the villain is a little bit more intrigued with her instead of obsessed. So it's going to be a little interesting how this unfolds because in the story that she read, the male lead was tortured in various ways. <laughs> and she's like wondering if she's going to get tortured the same way. She's trying to like stop that. Next is the secret room of a dejected royal daughter. This is a drama, fantasy, historical, Jose Manuel mature romance royal family webtoons. The mature is right. This is a story about this princess who lost her position, but she's like a princess in name. What happened was she was part of the main line, but then her mother died. And then her stepmother took to control and the stepmother made her son into the crown prince, who is now the king and such. So she knows she's like in a really bad position. She feels like she has no allies because her mother, who had allies, betrayed her in her eyes. But I think something's going on. Something's going on. And then somehow she gets cursed. And this curse is a salacious one. It triggers her to feel uncontrollable lust. It is unwanted. And... At first, she was able to resist it, but then one night it activates, and then she has like this one night stand that she doesn't remember. And then it gets revealed that it was with this guy that she hates. But this guy loves her, and she hates him because he's part of the family that she thought betrayed her mother. And he's trying to like be supportive of her, and she's like, no. I reject you. I hate you. And there's this cliche of not communicating that's causing this huge misunderstanding. And at first, I was getting a little tired of it. But other characters are being introduced, which makes it really interesting. And there's this priest who kind of helps her with that curse. So to deactivate the curse, she has to sleep with someone. So this priest lets her sleep with him. And he's a man whore. Yes, he is. And he knows it. And he takes advantage of his position because no one's going to talk about him. <laughs> and he's handsome so he can get away with it. And the other twist in this is he is associated with those who can put curses on people, similar curses that is on her. So it's like, yo, what is going on? And the last one is Queen Cecilia's Shorts. This is a comedy, historical romance, slice of life. This is also an isekai-like thing. I 
think our reincarnation, our main character actually just suddenly has enlightenment that she had a previous life. And with that, she's remembering things. And one of the things was that she was a clothing designer. And that is what she aspires to be. But in this time period like story she's in a position where she can't make clothes she can't have a business as she this is a patriarchal world run by men and so what she does is she disguises herself as a man and she strikes the deal with one of the best merchants in the area and from there they just grow this business and it got to the ears of this queen who is tired of wearing corsets and this seems like I'm tired of being a woman. <laughs> and she has all of these vassals and such telling her that she needs to get married, have babies. She's like, excuse you. I went out there on a journey to fight. I conquered these areas. I am queen of all these territories. Are you telling me to pop babies? No, no. And so she has this very dominant alpha vibe going on. And she also has like a younger brother who's kind of like that too, but he's a little bit more uh, passive. Like he's, oh, should I say passive? More like quiet? He's really quiet. And he has like an inferiority complex kind of thing. So he kind of lets people win when he knows he could win. He's got that kind of attitude vibe. Anyways, so he meets our main character and he is just trying to find a tailor to make clothes for his older sister. And he finds her female lead, introduces, everything comes great, and then he starts catching feelings. And he still thinks our female lead is a guy. So he's thinking, am I gay? And it's still not revealed yet. And after our female lead has a successful business, she makes clothes for the queen. All she's thinking about is how to make a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> and those were the five manga manhwa webtoons that I've been reading this week. Hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, give it a like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you want to hang out, I also stream on twitch.tv slash lifehilosuprofina. I also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. Link to the podcast is in the description below. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel. Talking about manga that we're reading at the moment. Hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Laters!